Hi everybody, I have another particle effect tutorial here and this one is basically like a big heavy stomp effect. So I'm just going to play it, let you see what it looks like. And that's the effect. Big heavy stomp, make something feel heavy. So how did I do that? Um, well, let me start off with the sound. I just found the sound on freesound.org for the stomp sound. And now to get to the more difficult part, the effect here. So without remaking the effect, I'm just going to tell you all the settings I did for it. So let's see, let me play it. It's an effect that plays one time. And here it is. I'm clicking the particle effect stomp. Um, here's the particle system. Here's the sound of the stomp that I uh, added to it. And I also added a script. And um, first let me explain the particle system settings. Um, I set it to, I turned off looping. The effect's only going to play one time. And the start lifetime I set to uh, two. So the duration of the effect is two. It really doesn't matter if I have the start lifetime of my particles to be only two seconds. And I slow down the part, the um, start speed. Let me just press play on this. And I'm just going to leave it playing while I'm talking about it. Play. So the start speed is 0.01. And the um, start size is 0.5. And the start rotation um, is anywhere from 0 to 180, so that these little smoke puffs are not all at the same um, rotation, and it adds a little bit more effect to them. And how, you see how the smoke puffs are coming up a little bit here from their origin point? They come up just a little bit. I did that with the gravity modifier. I just made it minus 0.05. And um, I set the simulation space to world because I like it when I could do something like this. Whoopsie, not that, not that. Escape, escape. I like it when I could move my object and the particles follow it. Um, what else? Oh, for emission, since this is like a stomp and it kind of would emit out a puff of smoke one time, I don't have emission over time and I don't have emission over distance. Basically, I made a burst emission, one burst. And this burst happens right away at the beginning of the playback of the effect. And I have it, say, set to spawn about 30 of these um, puff particle sprites. And it does it about two times at an interval of 0.01. The shape of the um, particle emission is a donut, as you can see right here in the blue. It's a donut shape. And that matches up with the um, shape of my cylinder. And it also gives me this um, effect where the particles are coming out from the sides of the cylinder. So I use the donut uh, shape for my emission and um, that's pretty easy to understand. The only thing is I did have to set the rotation of the donut on the x-axis, this red axis, to minus 90 degrees because by default it's zero and zero is not flat with the um, x-y plane. It's kind of like up like this. So instead of looking like a ring, I just went over here in the x and I said minus 90. So it could be flat with the XY plane. Um, let me go down before I explain velocity over lifetime and color. Color really didn't work. Turn that off. Is the renderer. So here in the renderer is where I get to set what I want my particles to be. And I chose a material called smoke. All right. So each of these particles is basically a material I called smoke. And this is um, what I made my smoke material from. I basically have a texture that's my puff, which you can see right here is basically a, a PNG file. A PNG file has like a transparent background. 
So I just outlined and I kind of drew a white little puffy cloud. Okay, and when I imported that PNG by dragging and dropping it into my assets window, um, I made sure to turn it to be a sprite texture, which allowed, and I press apply, which allowed the PNG and the transparency to come through. And then when I made a material of it over here, the smoke material, which you could see has the um, cloud texture drawn on it. Here it is, the uh, albedo. I used the puff. Um, and then I changed the rendering mode to fade so that just the part that is um, not transparent draws itself. If I left it with the default of opaque, you could see that I have the black. And you may think you would want to use transparent, and it almost works, but when you look really close, you still have a faded little square here. So I use fade, and it's the total just drawing of the shape. Um, now instead of it being a solid white, I wanted you to be able to see um, the multiple clouds being puffed in 3D. So instead of having it being a solid alpha on the albedo, instead of it being solid, I made it um, see-through. So I pulled it down a little bit. And what else? Um, yeah, that's basically how I made the texture for the smoke. So then if I go back to my particle here in the renderer panel of the particle system, I just dragged and dropped. I chose the um, smoke texture. What else is here? We got uh, another important setting was the size over lifetime. As you can see, the particles start out small and then they get bigger. So that's done with size over lifetime. I just checked that box. And then um, here I just set up a size over lifetime graph from the beginning to the end of its lifetime. And in the beginning, it starts off small works its way up like a puff of smoke spreading and then toward the end I just make the puff of smoke disappear by shrinking its size and that's how you see the effect of the size there then the other effect that was the next effect that was important was the velocity over lifetime so that when the cylinder just hits the ground it's like poof, and the uh, smoke kinda comes out faster in the beginning so the green line here is faster in the beginning, and then as the puffs of smoke get bigger and further, they slow down. Okay. And um, the velocity, what else did I have to do? Well, the radial's one. Did I have to do that, or was that there already? Yeah, I think the radial here, that was like how um, much speed this green line relates to. So here's a one. And then if I, say, turn it to a 3, it's moving a lot further. If I set it to, like, a 0.5, then you can see it barely moves. So I set the radial to um, a 1, and I like that setting for the speed. Oh, okay, so we got the, let me see, here with the time and the size and the gravity, here with the emission as a burst, here where the shape is a donut, um, the velocity over lifetime, I set radial to one and had a graph for the speed. Um, the size over lifetime over here, where I basically set the size to get bigger and then shrink at the end to make the little bit of a disappearing effect be smoother. And then the last one is this rotation over lifetime. It's not a really big effect, but as you can see, the clouds, they spin a little bit. And I just felt like that was a nice touch to give the movement. So there, that's how I did this effect. Um, then I just attach it to a cylinder. And when I attach it to the cylinder, the cylinder is here. And the particle effect, I just offset it from the cylinder's center. And I just moved it down a little bit. So that way, when I press play and the cylinder drops, the effect plays right off from the bottom of the cylinder. like like you saw right there. Um, this is basically effect and that. I mean, I did have two scripts here 
the stomp script, which is what I put onto the particle effect. You can see it right here, stomp. So say if I wanted to put, you know, I just wanted more control over when the things are dropping. And here's the script for that. Like if it plays on awake, and if it destroys after play, like if I have a bunch of objects dropping, then I have to go reference in the script to the particle system and the sound so I can play them off. Here in the start, I set the particle system in the audio source, and I see if it's play on awake, then I'll play the stomp effect. And that just means I, um, uh, well, I don't even need this line here anymore. I was trying to do something before. I just play the particle effect and I play the sound at the same time. And if I'm going to destroy this particle effect after the play, I will just invoke the destroy this function over here after three seconds. And I pick three seconds because by three seconds, my particle effect and my sound will be done playing because the duration of the um, life of my particles is two and the um, length of my sound is 2.3 seconds. So definitely after three seconds, I could destroy this and my effect finish playing. Then in the drop capsule, this is the capsule. So I mean the cylinder. Um, I just added a, a, a script here and the particle effect is a child. I just dragged and dropped it there. So that when the capsule collides with the floor on the on collision, I call the particle script and play the stomp effect. Okay. Hey, that's it. Um, there you go.